That's good. good. Leave it to the Good. All right. Now, this is the idea of eating. <clears throat> so it says <clears throat> that Aaron was a bit amazed that he had to bring an offering. He was very surprised. It says it was the same thing as, as Samson, Shimshon, was also surprised by the, the uh, what was it, by the, the, the riddle which was given to him, that from that which eats will come that which is eaten. What did it finally, what did it, what did it mean? A big, there was a lion and he saw he was tremendously hungry, whatever. They said there was a lion and inside of the lion, there was a uh, beehive where there was honey. So from the lion, which usually eats, came honey, which is eaten. <clears throat> and so the same thing was with Aaron. Aaron, that he was usually elevating the offerings. So now he's elevating the offerings. So now he has to bring an offering himself. He himself has to be elevated. <clears throat> so this says, what's the big question? What's the, what's the big deal? What's the big question? And also, you know, okay, maybe that's a little bit of a question for Samson. You know, it's a little bit from, from that which eats. It, be, it, it provides food is something that's eaten. Okay, so that's a little bit, maybe a little bit of a sort of a conundrum. You know, you can't understand it. But what's the big deal that Aaron brings a sacrifice? So why not? Why shouldn't he bring a sacrifice? Says, Just because he's always doing the help. He's elevating everything. So he himself should be elevated. What's the big question? It's like a doctor. A doctor never gets sick. A doctor heals people. He doesn't once in a while need a board. What's the big question? What was the big question? He says, the question is like this. Aaron was the ultimate highness, the ultimate level of holiness, of purity that a human being can reach. Aaron. Aaron reached the highest level of purity and holiness that you could possibly have. Therefore, he had the ability to do what every man is supposed to do, namely to use this world properly and to put meaning into everything in the world. Like we gave the example before, like putting a puzzle together, right? You put a puzzle together. First of all, you have a million pieces and you put them all together. You see, oh, it's a beautiful sunset on, on whatever it is and then over the, the, the Judean hills or something. <clears throat> beautiful picture. Same thing, you put the world together, you say, oh, it's a beautiful creation of God. Everything is a creation of the creator. Everything fits together. It's not just separate pieces. That was Aaron. He was the ultimate. <clears throat> it says, therefore, Aaron, he was the ultimate highness that there could be. It says, there's something like, what does it mean? Like a, It says that it's forbidden. This is where we got up to last time, I think. Like it's forbidden to eat before you pray. You're not supposed to eat a meal before you pray. It says, Why? Because the whole reason you're eating is supposed to elevate the food, and you can't elevate the food properly unless you're properly connected, aware of God. When you start to pray, and you say the praises of the King David said, you start to realize and feel that God hey, is really creating me, and God is really real, and God is really... <clears throat> infinitely good and God is infinitely loving and God is infinitely close to me and he's infinitely distant from even the angels he's infinite when you, normally in the course of the day you don't think about this but when you pray you do think about it oh once you're thinking about this and you got you're into the appreciation of the creator then you can eat then you can eat because eating who and in biru or this is the idea of refining the sparks of meaning the sparks of holiness which is which is in the food Right, the food previously was just vegetables, a, a piece of grain of wheat, or it was an animal, it was a cow. And the, <coughs> you're elevating the food, you're putting the puzzle in place. Therefore, patach b'mizbeach v'sayim b'shulchan. Therefore, you you began with the altar, the altar, the offering up the the offerings in the temple, and then you could eat a meal. Then you could eat. Right? You can only, and you can only eat if you're higher than the thing that you're eating. Michael, how can you elevate the food in your meal if you still are attached below? But what you have to pray. First of all, you pray. The time of prayer is a time of the Corban. The prayers nowadays are in the place of the sacrifices that were back then. This draws down godliness when you pray. It's drawing down godliness onto your soul by means of the 18 blessings of Baruch Hashem, blessing are you God, you draw down godliness 
onto your soul. In other words, you become the way you're supposed to be. You become higher than anything else in the creation. As then, afterwards, Davka, only after you pray, you can eat and to elevate the food also, etc. That's ideally the way it's supposed to be. Imkain, this just tells you different places to look for more information. Imkain, if so, cave into the beginners penei arye. <clears throat> Since it's on the altar, the face of the lion ate up the sacrifices, therefore there has to be Shahu Atzmo, <clears throat> he himself, Aaron, in order to draw this whole thing down, that there was a lion that came down and ate the sacrifices, and Aaron also ate the sacrifices, which we said was even higher than the, than the burning up on the altar, the fact that that was one type of elevation, but Aaron eating the sacrifice, that was even higher, so therefore Aaron has to be the ultimate level of purity. <clears throat> now here we're talking about us eating our same thing that's why our own that he ate the sacrifices that his eating caused the sacrifices to be elevated just like the man sitting on the throne he connects to the man sitting on the throne that's on the, the throne which is above the whole entire business he's above even the lion which is remember we said before that on the sacrifices there was a lion that came down from heaven that's like the lion that <clears throat> Isaiah and Ezekiel saw on the around the throne the face of the lion. But when Aaron ate from the sacrifices, which there's some of the sacrifices that the Kohanim also ate, when Aaron ate from the sacrifices, that was even higher. That was even a greater revelation of godliness. That's, that connects to the man that's sitting on the throne that's above the lion. <clears throat> if so, Aaron, Aaron, he says, that's the letters of near at, to be seen. And also, Aryeh is also the thing of being seen. But watch, Aaron is a higher level, Gavoyot. Okay, that's the whole thing of what Aaron was. So Aaron, that he was the ultimate high of a human being, what a human being can be. He was the ultimate purpose of what a person was to be. Aaron. How can Aaron, he himself has to bring a sacrifice to it? <clears throat> There's nothing can be, that can be higher than him. How can it, when he has to bring a sacrifice and be, he has to be elevated, how can Aaron be elevated? That was his question. <clears throat> that was the same question as with Samson. Samson, he saw a lion. A lion, that's like the lion on the face of the altar, on the, around, around the bottom of the altar. A lion that eats, he devours the sacrifices. That he has to be elevated. There's something that's going to be eaten from him. He has to be elevated. He has to be eaten himself. <clears throat> he provides the food. Aaron has to be elevated. This, this, that's the question. Aaron learned from the lion, from the lion of, of Samson. The lion, that refers to the lion around the bottom of the chariot. <clears throat> that, that elevates the sacrifice. Aaron, that represents the man sitting on the, on the chariot or on the throne, wherever that, that Isaiah saw. How can those two be elevated? They're the ultimate level of elevation. So it says that's the whole idea of eating and being eaten. Let's see, let's go with this. In can, if so, Aaron, that he eats all the sacrifices, for whom he elevates all of them. And how can it possibly be? That he himself has to be elevated. Midrash, that's the whole entire intention of that Midrash that said that Aaron, his, his bringing a sacrifice was comparable to the honey that was found in the lion by Samson. Who to me This is a big wonder. Aaron, that's the ultimate highness. How can Aaron? He has to be elevated. Where is it to be elevated to? Ella Indian, but it's like we said before. That in the future, and that's talking about the future is supposed to be right now. That now, which are souls, very very high souls. Vakar and the and they were already fixed up. Tachlis in the ultimate. That they are all purified and elevated. I'll so if so, but nevertheless, as high as they are, the Gabi and the in guarding the souls that will be revealed in the future, they come from what's called Soviv Kalmim. This is called Behemoth. The, all the, uh, the, the, the holy people now are like animals and compared to <clears throat> those souls that are going to be revealed. It's something like that. It says also in the Zohar that the Mashiach is going to make the tzaddikim do tshuva. That was one of the points of, of contention between the Hasidim and the opposers of the Hasidim. 
that they call themselves the Mitnagdin. Oh, they call themselves, the <coughs> according to Hasidut, every Jew is holy. The teachings of Hasidut, but that's what we're learning now. Every Jew is holy. Up to then, and then Judaism had deteriorated to the point, or I don't know, anyway, that was accepted anyway, that no, only those people who learn the Torah and do the commandments, they're holy. And the ones that don't, they're lost, whatever, you know, they're just, you know, they're like animals or something. That's what was accepted. If you learn the Torah and do the commandments, then you're holy, and if not, you're not. And I'm, and <clears throat> how do you say, conversely, if you're already holy, then you don't have to fix yourself up. Then you don't have to, how do you say, elevate yourself, do tshuva. Came along Hasidic and said, no, every Jew is holy. Every single Jew is holy. <clears throat> they have to reveal it, but they're, 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 they're holy. And even no matter how high of a level of holiness you do manifest, how much of that holiness that is concealed you reveal, nevertheless, you always have to reveal more. There's an infinite amount of holiness remaining to be revealed. So two opposites, right? Two opposites. On one hand, everybody's already holy. So if you're already holy, you don't have to do anything, right? He says, no, no, that's not so. If everybody's holy, it means that you have an obligation to do more. And the holier you get, the more you have to do. Huh? <clears throat> Which of that, I think that applies to everything pretty much. I don't know, maybe, maybe sports not, I don't know. But in any, any realm of understanding of uh, this, the more you understand, the more you realize you don't understand. I, I remember reading a, a quote from Isaac Newton, who was arguably the biggest genius that ever lived. I mean, he was certainly on a par with, uh, with Einstein. And he said that I feel my whole life has been, I mean, he revealed things that, you know, just nobody else had revealed, the, the, these motion and, and what is it, and uh, gravity and things like that. All sorts of principles that... <coughs> <clears throat> weren't known before and he even also things with light oh, he was a tremendous genius and he said i feel my whole life that i've just uh, taken a stroll on this the ocean of wisdom and i've picked up one little like seashell or a little something like nothing <clears throat> and einstein was sort of the same thing you know he, he came to the conclusion there must be a god it wasn't exactly the god of the torah when it was like the god of of Hinduism or something, but nevertheless, he came to the conclusion that there is a God and that there's infinite wisdom somewhere and that there's the world is, and that we're just partaking a little bit of it. That's talking about regular secular subjects, but here we're talking about, and even if a person reaches to the level of our own, which is the highest of the highs, you can't believe anything higher, nevertheless, he has to be elevated. And that's what it means that the, the Mashiach is going to come and make all of the tzaddikim, the holiest Jews, do tshuva. I think that's the same topic as we're talking about here. <clears throat> so if so, regarding the, 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 the even no matter how high these a, a person can be now, but in regarding to the souls in the future, they are called animals. That's what it means <clears throat> that the food came from the thing, the, 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 that which is consumed, the, the honey, that which will be eaten comes from the thing that usually eats. Shemash <clears> al-yabachin is ochal, that which was already eaten and it was already purified and refined and it fixed up others like Aaron fixed everybody else up or like the lion that devours other things or like the lion on the, the altar that came down the fire that came down Achshav, now Yetzemi who comes from it food that it comes into <clears throat> it becomes like physical food what does it mean physical food it says that in the future that there's going to be this big meal for the tzaddikim which is going to be from this big fish, which is going to be called Leviathan, and a big ox, which is called Shorabar, the, the wild ox, or the outside ox, or the refined ox, whatever. By means of this, they will be elevated even more. All of our deeds that we've done will be elevated more. That's the whole idea of the riddle, the mystery of Samson. <clears throat> Why it's the same thing of Samson because it says Samson was called by the name of God, like it says Shemesh v'Mogin Hashem Elokim, that God is the sun and the shield over the sun. So Samson Shimshon was like the sun. 
that the name of Yudke Vavke, the name of God, that's like the sun, Shem, Shemesh. And Shimshon was, <clears throat> Samson was, I guess, the last of the Shoftim, of the judges. Unless you count Eli. Eli was after Samson. He was the last. But usually they say Samson was the last of the judges. And even though there's all these, you know, sordid stories about him with his, the wives that he took and the things like that, but they can't be taken <clears throat> as face value. He was just like this, you know, big, strong Hercules guy, and he was just running after all these women. But this was a part of the purification, something like King Solomon did. Okay, well, if you read the simple story, it doesn't seem like that, but <clears throat> the fact of the matter is that everything he did was only for the sake of God. <clears throat> it was it was purely it was it was what God wanted it to do. And that's why he was called by the name of God. Lochem, therefore he gam bechinas aria, the same thing of the lion. That's the lion, which we're talking about the lion that came down on the offerings, which this is the level of food, and it elevates, it came from it, from the lion. That usually it devours food. From it comes something that is devoured. Right? The lion, which usually eats came from him something which is eaten. And there was the lion that came down on the altar to elevate everything by eating it up. The lion itself will be elevated. And that's like this level of the Shemesh, like the sun. <clears throat> because the ultimate desire of the angels, Malachim, of the angels, who is only Lishtab of Guf Malka to be included in the body of God. That's like this, this lion that came down from heaven. Zeo Inyan ki megivia sa'aria from the corpse of the lion, Radha Davash came down, he took out honey, like it says it, etc., etc., etc. From something lion, which was bitter, came something that's sweet. Simple, it's also the thing of the sacrifices of Aaron, the day that Aaron was anointed, that was an elevation. Aaron himself, as high as he was, had to be elevated. It says that Aaron was really at the same level as Moses was. First of all, Aaron was older than Moses, <laughs> he was older. And he was, but God chose Moses. God chose Moshe. And Moshe, he went alone into the, this. But the fact is that Aaron was at the same level of Moshe. <clears throat> Even Moshe, when he went up into Mount Sinai, he also had to be elevated. It said he didn't eat. He went ahead to go into the cloud. It said, Aaron. Aaron, we said, that's the level of Bechinus Ma. That's a, a level of godliness which comes from above to below, like the Kohanim. They give a blessing from above to below. That's Kavar. We, we sort of skipped that over. Oh, okay. it, was, it was up above. Shekavar, whom of war, he is already the ultimate level of purity. Okay. Nevertheless, there came out from him. He had to bring a sacrifice. He had to be refined also. And this idea of the refining that's going to come in the future, this comes from a tremendously high source. That it can anoint even what is holy. It elevate that what is holy. And that's the whole idea of the Mashiach. Mashiach is going to be a person. That's the Lubavitcher Rebbe. That's the Lubavitcher Rebbe. That's all the Rebbe's of Chabad. And there's, I mean, there's stories about how he healed people that were sick. They're just in, incredible. And it was just done like, you know, like an ATM machine. The Rebbe, right? You, you have $1,000 in the bank. You want to take out five hundred dollars? There's no miracle that you stick a, a, your card and it comes out money. What's the thing? It was almost the same thing by the, the Rebbe, right? The people would write into the Rebbe, and all of a sudden there would be these big miracles. There's things that happen now, also even now, with the Igeras Kodesh people go to the OL. The amazing miracles occur, but the miracles that's just small change. That's like Moses doing miracles. That wasn't the main thing. The main thing was is that he inspired all of the Jews that they too could elevate the world, could refine the world. <clears throat> so that's what it says. Therefore, the, the, the idea that we're waiting for with the third temple will be that there'll be revealed a new type of holiness, a new type of awareness of God that can elevate even the highest tzaddikim, even people like that on the level of Aaron. He says, it's Aaron, Aleph, Har is the kindness of God. Nun comes to the lowest levels. <clears throat> that's what we're waiting for. That's what certainly is going to happen. That's the whole idea of the temple, and especially of the third temple, to elevate 
the world. That's the says that's the whole idea of the Mashiach. Shem and Mishchat Kodesh, beom himashachoto, of anointing. As we're going to talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. So if so, we see from this that the idea of the temple, how dynamic and important that it was, and why it's so necessary that we have a third temple in order to bring us this inspiration to do what we're being created to do. That's how we began the class. As God willing, we'll talk about more tomorrow. Now let's learn the Dvar Malchut. Sorry for the interruption in the, in the middle. Okay.